deck the halls with boughs of holly. Fa la 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 la. Tis this. Oh, sorry. We're on. Are we live now? Oh, ah, welcome, welcome again to another um, half an hour of uh, the Deal Doctor live stream. I hope you've got some questions today, but um, let me make a couple of announcements and. Let's start with, um, as of December 1st, the FSRE.biz uh, is going to go away. So um, if you don't have your uh, broker sumo information loaded up, well, um, that, that could be challenging for you. So uh, like how to get paid, um, if you're, especially if you're doing uh, uh, automatic deposits and so on. So I asked Justin to to load the link onto this live stream for you so that you can go in and uh, do that today and make sure that uh, you don't have, I'm sorry, the broker wolf is going away December 1st. Um, but so is FSRE. So if you have information on FSRE, like maybe a save file or uh, logos or something that you want to pull off there, be sure that you do that prior to uh, December 1st. The big one though is to make sure that you get signed up for the Broker Sumo uh, program. Um, Sidekick. Sidekick is um, our new uh, agent website, um, the CRM website. And it's really important that you get your uh, individual page on that website uh, up to date with your photo, your bio, uh, contact information. Um, people are going to be able to Google you, um, uh, you find you in a Google search, and if that page is empty, then it doesn't really look like you're in the business. So there are a couple of boot camps that are going to be taking place. One is in Grand Rapids on December 4th. If you haven't signed up for that and you're an agent in the Grand Rapids area or would like to come to Grand Rapids for that, uh, December 4th is the date. And again, I'll ask Mary to um, put a link on this site. If um, I actually think she, she announced it in her uh, in her announcements for the day or for the week. So look at those announcements. Make sure that you get signed up if you want to come to the Grand Rapids uh, boot camp uh, for Sidekick. And then there's one in Muskegon. There will be one in Muskegon, which we'll, we will be announcing, um, and also in Kalamazoo. Um, so scratch a couple of those off the list. Um, if you haven't signed up for the Christmas party yet, uh, it's a great event, lots of fun. Hope you can make it. <clears throat> Speaking of Christmas parties, well, um, we're, we're now officially in the holiday season, and very often agents get distracted in the holiday season because there are so many Christmas parties. There are a lot of events going on that will take you out of the business, whether it's luncheons, uh, evening parties, um, get-togethers with with friends or vendors, um, be very careful not to allow uh, the month of December to take you out of the real estate business. Enjoy the month; it's a great, <clears throat> it's a great month. Excuse me. <clears throat> it's a great time to um, enjoy some uh, friendly time with others in the business, and of course with family, but. Stay focused a little bit on on getting business for the new year. And I talked a little bit about getting business and, and making a commitment last time, week about um, calling your friends and family, clients, and saying thank you. Um, uh, usually I have to call my family and say thank you for putting up with me for all these years. Um, they, they, you know, they accept it now, and, and, and thank God for that. Um, this week I want to talk a little bit more about staying focused and pursuing listings because listings are still, as they always have been, the name of the game. The most successful realtors, the longest lasting realtors in, this, in the business are those that focus on listings. For those of you that are new to the business or fairly 
new to the business. Um, if you came into the business with a lot of friends and a lot of contacts, uh, a, a, a lot of uh, a, a big network of, of uh, people that you talk to frequently, um, you may have had the good fortune of having people come to you and say, hey, I want to list my house or I'd like to help you uh, have you help me as a buyer's agent. Well, let's go back to the I want you to list my house folks. Those are really the ones that you want. You can manage 10 listings a lot more effectively, a lot more easily than you can tr attempt to manage 10 buyers. If you can manage 10 buyers out running around showing them all houses in a given week, um, you've got some real talent. Um, I don't want to work that hard, frankly. So if I have 10 uh, listings that can be shown by agents uh, through the help of showing time. Um, wow, well, I, I can <laughs> I can go to a holiday party and instead of showing houses. Um, so, one of the biggest obstacles I've found in interviewing agents, uh, as it regards getting listings, is um, how how do you do that? Where do you start? Well, obviously the first thing is you got to find them. Uh, Right now, in this month, there are a huge number of expired listings. I know this because I worked the expired listings business for 25 years. I know that in December, there are a lot of agents who fill out their contracts and they end them on the 31st day of December of, that, of whatever that year is. So you're going to find that there are a ton of of uh, expired listings out there and um, I've shared with with many folks the uh, process for pursuing expired listings which I will do uh, another day but today I really want to focus on the process or the structure of a listing presentation a listing meeting um, there are some agents who are very flexible some agents who can talk off the cuff um, have a lot of experience where they can just simply sit down with people and say, um, so how can I help you sell your house? Um, what are you hoping to accomplish? And so on. And that is a talent, some of its experience. But for those agents who are inexperienced or uncomfortable with simply flying by the seat of your pants, um, I'm going to offer you what's called a listing presentation today. Now, um, on, on Friday, December 14th, I'm going to be awarded a 30-year uh, pin, 30 years with the Grand Rapids Association of Realtors. And it's uh, truly flown by. I, uh, I, w I was quite shocked at that. Um, not real happy, but shocked. Um, and when I first got into this business, I really didn't know how to go after uh, listings. I, I chose the expires because they had already uh, elected uh, to hire a real estate agent. They, they were already uh, predisposed to that. But I also went after uh, for sale by owners and any friends and family, people in my sphere of influence. Um, I was working all sorts of things because I quit my job. And I needed money. And so the faster I generated listings, the quicker I generated money to feed my family. It was out of necessity that I became effective with listing properties. And I turned to some of uh, my mentor uh, and, and to uh, others in the business and I said, what do you do when you go out on a listing appointment? And consistently the top agents all said I tell them what I'm going to tell them I tell them and then I tell them what I told them now for those of you who have studied the I believe it's uh, might be Dale Carnegie uh, that 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 created that process I'm not sure but um, but it's a great strategy because if you tell people 
what you're going to tell them, you alleviate a lot of stress, you alleviate a lot of tension uh, in your initial meeting. And so, um, because they know what to expect now. If I sit here and say to you, well, I'm going to tell you this in the next 20 minutes. I'm going to tell you what to do uh, when you get to a house to go on a listing appointment. Um, do you think that would help? Does it, does it make you feel a little less stressful about what's going to happen in the next 20 minutes? Well, I hope so. Um, I hope that, that that is the outcome. So here's what I do. When I go out on a listing appointment, and, and let's say it's 7 o'clock at night, I'm always on time. I'm always dressed. I'm waiting down the street probably at about uh, 10 minutes to 7 until I pull up at about um, you know 6.58, and I pull in front of the house, and I'm ringing the doorbell exactly at, at 7 o'clock. And so I ring the doorbell. Um, I smile. I pay him a compliment. I take him to the kitchen table. I break the ice. I take him out on a safe island, ask him a bunch of questions, um, and then I look around the house. That's just a start. Now let me slow it down a bit and go back. Um, obviously, when you ring the doorbell, you don't know what to expect. I will, I'll tell you a quick story about my first uh, listing appointment. It was awful. There, the story's over now. Um, it was really, really bad. I, I rang the doorbell. I had no idea what I was going to do. Um, and I failed miserably at it because I allowed the seller to take control of the meeting. I allowed the seller to pull me into the, essentially into the living room, sit down on the couch, and there was, there was nothing I could do but sit and sort of smile as he told me how wonderful his house was and aren't you going to look at it? Why haven't you looked at it yet? Well, I, I, I was awful. And I left that meeting and I thought, well, I hope I, 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 I don't want to ever do that again. So what do I do? Well, I actually put together a book that's called a listing presentation. And some of you may uh, do fine, make, make, make hundreds of thousands of dollars in this business without it. And to you, congratulations. If you don't, if it isn't broke, don't fix it. That's what I, um, but if you want a structure, if you want a crutch, if you will, here, here it is. Um, it's really pretty easy. It starts out with my name and who I am. It says Don Fainel, Associate Broker, Five Star Real Estate. And then the very next thing, it just has a couple of little pictures. The very next thing is I tell them what we're going to talk about. I say, I'd like to just um, uh, ask you a few questions. This is, by the way, the safe island. When I went through the ring the doorbell, smile, pay them a compliment, take them out on the safe island. Taking them out on the safe island is to say, let's go here, we're going to go out, sit and have a little conversation, but this is what we're going to talk about. This is me taking control of that meeting so that we stay on task, so that we stay focused about getting the information that I need in order to be able to help them the best I can. So I'm going to ask them a few questions. Uh, and, and I actually will share with you in a second the questions. And then I'm going to look around the house. I'm going to come back to the table and I'm going to show you how to get home sold, how I get home sold. Uh, I'm going to review the value of your house uh, based on having looked around it and also the homework that I've already done um, and give you an idea of what you can expect in a range, not an exact price, but a range of price and sales price and what that will net you uh, in your pocket walking away after the mortgage is paid off. Would that be helpful to you? I'm hoping that they're saying yes. If they're saying no, then I've missed something. Um, then I, I, I say to them, then I'm going to show you the forms that we're going to use in uh, a real estate <coughs> transaction today. The listing form, the disclosure form, the seller's disclosure of condition, lead base paint, and so on. <clears throat> because I want you to understand uh, what, trans what the transaction uh, 
forms look like so that it's not a surprise to you as we go down the road uh, in the transaction. And finally, ultimately you have a decision and I have a decision. You have a decision whether or not I'm the right real estate agent for you and I have a decision whether or not your listing is one that I can pour all of my energies and money toward in order to get it sold. Does that seem fair? And what I did there, I want to point out, is I said, I'm not here just to take your listing at whatever price and terms you want to give it to me. I'm here to determine whether or not your house is marketable. And if I want to take your listing, if I want to put that in my inventory, it's my choice. And I'll work very hard for you. I'll work my tail off for you. But I'm not here for you to tell me, here's what I want, now go sell it and go spend a bunch of money on advertising when it's an unrealistic price and the, and the house is in great condition. Does that make sense? It's a little bit about taking control and setting boundaries for your own listings that you're going out there. And I will assure you that this stuff works. I mean, it, it's not words, it's not a script, but it is a structure that will help you, uh, a framework that will help you on a listing appointment. <clears throat> so, would it be okay if we could start? How about if I ask you the questions? In fact, um, I'm even going to show you what the questions are. <laughs> right there. Um, and they start out with the easy questions. Why are you moving? Do you move in for a job? You want a bigger house, smaller house? Uh, kids moved out? kids moving in. What's your motivation? Um, when do you want to move? Well, you might have to be out on the job in Iowa on January 1st. Well, that means we better hurry up, doesn't it? Um, and I don't give them any answers to any of these questions. I don't address any of the solutions as I'm ask, uh, asking the questions. I am gathering information gathering information that will ultimately allow me to create a structure, a strategy for going uh, forward and helping them um, sell their house. What major improvements have you made? Who else are you talking about? I want to know who my competition is because the likelihood is if it's someone that I know, um, I, I know their strengths, but I also know their weaknesses. And while I never say anything negative about someone else, I'm going to focus on my strength over that particular agent when I make my presentation. Does that make sense? Um, <clears throat> whatever, whatever, what other uh, sources of funds do you have available to you? That's going to make a big, uh, a, a big uh, uh, impact on whether or not, let's say they could go land contract, they could sell their house land contract or if they could sell their house, buy another house before they have to sell this one. Um, what price do you think your home will sell for? How did you arrive at that price? Was it out of thin air? Was it from the SEV? Uh, did some other agent tell you that you could uh, get a certain price? Or did you just come up with it based on um, what you need out of the home? Um, what's the most important thing? What's your major concerns? What would it do to your plans if you could not sell? Notice they're getting harder as we go along. What would it do to your plans if we couldn't sell your home? That's the look I get usually when I ask that question. Like, well, I never even considered the possibility that, that you couldn't sell my home. I, I, why, I, this, is, this is my beautiful home. This is where I raised my family. What, 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 why would you ask that question? Because the reality is that in a normal market, now, now this hasn't been a normal market for the last couple of few years, but in a normal market, 40% of the homes that are listed ultimately expire. That's why. 40% ultimately expire. I would bet that even in this market, 20 to 25% of the homes that are putting it, put on the market are ex ultimately expiring because they're not ready to be marketed, they're not in the right condition to be marketed, or um, uh, they're priced too high. Um, how are we doing on time here? I can't quite... 20 minutes. Huh? 20 minutes in. Tw 20 minutes, good. Um, and finally, 
I'm going to ask a real tough question. I mean, th this is like a, you know, the gut gauge is pegged all the way to the right on this boy. Um, what do you need to know today to make a decision to get the ball rolling? What do you need to know from me today in order to move forward and get the ball rolling? And very often what you're going to find is they're going to come back to you and say, I need to know, number one, what the price of the house is or what you think the price will, it will sell for. Um, and I need to know what your marketing plan is. How, 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 are you gonna, how, how many open houses are you going to do? <laughs> um, we could talk about that later. Um, my marketing plan um, is uh, my marketing. I, I'll, I'll go into my marketing plan in just a second. Kim Southwick has a question: Is this a one list, a one visit listing appointment? Do you drop off or send a pre-listing package? And the answer is uh, yes to both. Um, yes, I send a pre-listing package, which is um, a part of this. It's it's in fact it comes in a zipper thing that I actually have sent over, I have it couriered over, I hire a courier to do it, so it doesn't look like I'm out delivering my own pre-listing package to them. Um, it has some information, it may have contracts in it, um, it shows a little bit about the, uh, my past uh, success in terms of getting homes sold, um, some testimonial letters and that sort of thing. So the answer is yes, I do send a pre-listing package, but this is intended to be a one-stop listing uh, presentation. I don't like two-stop. It, it, to me, if you can't do it um, on the first stop, the likelihood is some other agent is going to scoop it on you. So um, I always go for a one-stop listing. Now that I have, I know a bunch of stuff because I've been making notes the whole time we've been asking questions. I know a bunch of stuff about them. Um, and then I say, well, would you show me your house? Would you take me on a tour of your home? In fact, as we go through the house, would you do me a small favor? Would you make sure that when you, there's something that you want me to see, <clears throat> something that's been extra special in your home as you've lived here and you've really enjoyed, I want you to point that out to me because I don't want to miss it uh, unintentionally as we go through the home. Would you do that for me? And of course they say, yes, of course, why, sure. And while we're at it, if I find something that might make it easier for you to sell, make your home more marketable, maybe sell in a shorter period of time or for more money, do you want me to share that information with you? I've just asked them permission to criticize their house um, critique. Okay, fine. But the point is, if you ask them permission to tell you, for, for you to tell them how they can improve their house, that the Pepto-Bismol walls in the master bedroom are probably not the best uh, color to, to get the maximum price for their home. Uh, if they give you the permission to tell them these sort of things, it's a lot softer, a lot easier on them uh, when, when you're doing it. So, um, you do as you like, but I found that it works. Um, once I've gone through the house and taken all sorts of um, uh, notes, I come back to the table and I say, may I sh sh share with you uh, a little bit about my company and how I get home sold? Would that be okay? And so <clears throat> I go through and I say, here's what we do. Here's how we get homes sold. We're going to be um, all over professional video production, uh, internet marketing, social media marketing. We're going to do open houses. Yes, I, I still believe in open houses. Not a lot of them, but at least one. Um, I do what's often, I do what's called the curious neighbor open house. I invite the neighbors over an hour early before the public open house, and I promote that throughout the neighborhood. And so you get the neighbors there at 1 o'clock, and they go, 
Ooh, we got to call Sally and Tom. You know, they've always said that they wanted to live in our, they'd love this house, and we'd love them to be neighbors. Let's get on the phone and have them get over here by 2 o'clock, and you'd be amazed how, how many times it works. So, um, I do brochures. I create my own brochures for uh, everyone. Um, I show them some testimonials from folks who have um, actually written nice things about me. And then I show them some of the marketing materials that I've created for various properties over the years and more testimonials. Um, I share with them how many houses I've sold. It's a couple um, over the years. Um, that's pretty small type. Um, and they get an idea that I've been in the business uh, long enough to, to uh, uh, know a little bit about it. Uh, show them some of my, my background, education, um, stuff, real estate career uh, stuff, EPRO, ABR, all that stuff. And then handwritten letters of, from people. And I say to them at the end of that all, based on what I've shown you today, do you think about whether, do you think about, um, do you think I'm capable of selling your home? Yes or no? Well, if their answer is no, then I failed. But the answer is almost always yes. <clears throat> and then they say, well, of course, it depends on what, what, your, um, what your price is. And my question to them is, are you going to choose a real estate agent based on what the agent tells you, based on what you want to hear about the price, or based on their qualifications and their marketing plan? And all of a sudden, they wake up and go, wait a minute. Um, I, I want the agent who's going to be straight with me, who's going to work the hardest, and who knows the most about real estate. And if you're that agent, um, you have a much higher likelihood of getting more listings, of going on, uh, when you go on four appointments, instead of getting one, you might get three. And I've got a couple questions, so let's see what they are. Um, Penny McCray. Can we get a list of your questions, format, etc.? Of course you can. Um, I would love to go through that binder from Joanna Lasser. Um, I will make this um, available um, and have one of the BAs uh, copy this whole thing and make it available to anyone who wants it. Um, now, obviously, <laughs> uh, you'll have to fix it to, to make it yours. Um, because you're not going to do the same things that I do and have this, the same uh, uh, type of experience, but at least it gives you a place to start. It gives you a structure to begin with so that you can go out and compete uh, for listings. Because I can promise you, uh, after Janu the first of January, you're going to look around and go, Okay, Thanksgiving's over, Christmas is over, New Year's is gone, and I don't have any business. And it's going to terrify you. So, if you don't have a listing presentation right now, and you've got some time to create one, um, I'll share this with, with, with anyone. Um, we'll, we'll make uh, some copies and make them available. Kim Anderson uh, wants it. So... Um, who do we reach out to? Well, Kim, you just did. Um, we'll get um, copies of that made uh, for whoever wants it. Um, and, and, and then at least you've got something that you can take uh, as your own uh, and go out there and uh, rock the house. Um, any more questions? I'm down to about a minute. No? What time am I showing here? 29.20. A minute. It's <laughs> Okay. All right. Well, um, again, uh, if I don't see, see any questions coming up here shortly, um, I wish you all great holidays and uh, look forward to seeing all of you at the Christmas party. Uh, come up, say hello, and, um, and, and I'll uh, find you as well. And... Um, I think uh, that about covers it for today. I hope it's helpful. We'll make sure that we get copies of this made for people and um, uh, let you know where you can uh, get
can find that. Uh, I don't know who that's going to be at this point, but we'll make sure that it's available to you. Okay? Have a great day. See you next week.